great to see everybody. What is that? Is that you or me? It ain't me. <laughs> I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Wednesday, October 4th. Tomorrow, Thursday, I've got a live streaming event, and I invite you to it. I do this every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Me and my co-host Taylor were there for an hour talking to other investors about stocks they're interested in. I share stocks with you all week. This gives you a chance to share some hot stocks with us. Now, if you really want to get your ticker looked at, I'd suggest you put your ticker in early. I mean before 4 o'clock. I do put up a placeholder for the video much earlier, sometimes 10 in the morning, sometimes 2 in the afternoon. In either case, you can drop your ticker in there then. That'll give me a chance to take a look at it, give you the most bang for your buck, and you know your ticker is going to be looked at because it is first come, first served. That's 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time every Thursday. So what I do in this show is I share hot penny stocks with you. I go on a hunt every day looking for stocks under five bucks on any market that have potential to make us money. And I find these hot stocks by looking at the charts first. I am all about the technicals. When I find a chart that has heat, volume coming in, a breakout setup, then I'll go looking through the filings and the press releases looking for a catalyst. When I get a catalyst, I've got myself a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I share with you regularly. And we're going to do that right now. First one we're taking a look at is Star Alliance International. This is ticker STAL. Now we've already looked at this just a little bit ago. I think it was on the 25th of September. We looked at it because she had a breakout. She had one of those directional intentional spikes, a big long spike that went through the strong SMA and came back down no lower than where she started from. And I said, Put this on your watch list. This is the first precursor sign we look for before a breakout. Well, that was a few days ago. And if you're a lot like me, chances are you need a heads up and a reminder occasionally. Well, that's what this is because she looks like she's getting ready to break out now. So STAL, she finished the day at 0019 and had almost 47% gains today. She's on the pink tier. She's current. She's got a transfer agent verified, but we don't see a verified profile. I'm always talking to you about those two green ticks because they're validated information. And when you're trading pinks, you're not getting any validated information. So those two green ticks are real important. They're not deal breakers if we don't have them there, but it is more assurance. So what is Stahl all about? Well, I'm going to start over here and we'll come back here. Star Alliance International Corps is a worldwide holdings company with strong assets in the U.S., Honduras, and Guatemala. Their assets include gold mines in California and Honduras. In addition, Star searches out innovative new technologies that are eco-friendly, including Genesis, our environmentally safe gold extraction system. This is an invention they've got that helps people sort gold out faster and easier. The Genesis Gold and other minerals extraction system extracts minerals from oxide and complex ores much faster than other processes in an environmentally safe manner. Now Star is adding new proprietary technology platforms in AI and fintech that will enhance the value of the group. And lastly, we have our patented Barotex technology. Barotex is our fibers that are manufactured from volcanic rock that are incredibly light, stronger than steel, wood, carbon fiber, fiberglass, aluminum, and even Kevlar. And check this out, they are all biodegradable. The product can be used in many everyday applications. So the company is doing quite a lot of different things. They are diversified. They have gold mining, they have their barrel text volcanic rock fiber, they have AI and FinTech now, and they have their Genesis invention. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Not bad. We've got uh, just under 50% increase. She's normally doing 6.7 million shares. Today she did 9.3 million. And I looked at this early in the morning, about 10 o'clock, I think, 11 o'clock, somewhere around there, she was already at 7 million, had already broke her average early in the day. Share structure for stall. 
We got a lot of shares here. Outstanding share count is 308 million. The insiders, they got the lion's share, 167 million. That leaves us with a float of 140 million. Not a great float, but it's not terrible. We can live with it. Financials for Stow. We have nothing on the annual and we have nothing on the quarterly. But the news that we're going to take a look at shows hope for that changing imminently. Taking a look at the disclosures for the company. All we've really got here current is a late filing. NT10K. That is an abbreviation for not filing our annual report. They're late. This buys them 10 days when they file this. They filed it on the 29th. That means that they have until the 9th or the 8th of this month to get their annual report out. If not, they will be in hot water. Not drastically so, but they need to get that out ASAP. Let's take a look at that news now. So we've got three pieces of news here. All of these have come out here in the last month. Star Alliance International agrees to purchase AI English OTG. They tell us here that Star Alliance has agreed to purchase 51% of AI English OTG. The product line that has been developed includes AI technology to rapidly accelerate English language instruction with micro learning methodologies. The company synthesizes AI with its user experience and interface design into a highly personalized, enjoyable, user-friendly learning experience. AIE has already developed distribution systems and partners across 15 countries throughout Asia, Latin, and North America with another 17 countries in the process of being activated. The markets in Asia and Latin America have the potential audiences of over 3 billion non-English speaking people. The company solves the global teacher shortage with its unique AI. So what you've got here is an AI global teacher. That is one division. Another piece of news we've got here. This came out September 29th. The company agrees to an extension with Lionworks and Comsa. Now there's actually two pieces of news inside this. One is they've got extra financing to keep their gold mining going forth. The second piece of news is they've made a joint venture with the company. This company is going to take over selling the Genesis to other gold mining companies who would like to use it. And then the last piece of news that came out today. They tell us up here that the company has agreed to purchase DigiPro payments. They're going to get 51% of this company as well. This company is doing business under the name of NetSimple. The transaction will close no later than October 12th, eight days away. NetSimple is a fintech and merchant service provider company with a proven track record and current leadership that has invested over 10 years of continuous strategic technology development and technical market testing prior to launching the brand. NetSimple uses proprietary software as a service platform that enables publishers to create, manage and market websites, shopping carts, and digital web content with fully integrated online, in-person, and brick-and-mortar payment processing. NetSimple has revenue this year through September of $704,000 growing monthly with the current run rate at an excess of $100,000 and they are profitable. With this acquisition, revenue is expected to more than double over the next six months. This is an exciting acquisition for Star. It brings revenue and profit immediately as well as an exciting plan for growth. They need that revenue. Now this is important. This does not in any way change our core business of mining and mining technology. However, with our available asset base, we intend to continue to look for undervalued assets that will drive shareholder value. So they're doing a lot of different things. You could kind of think of it as hedging themselves. They're not all in the same sector, are they? They're working with this weird type of fiber that's stronger than Kevlar. They are mining for gold. They have got a invention that's going to help other gold miners extract gold faster. They've got a lot happening and the chart looks like it's ready to break out right now. Let's go take a look at it. As we always do, we're going to do our charting on Thinkorswim. This is my free trading platform I got when I signed up with TD Ameritrade. 
and that didn't cost me anything either. So we're going to take a look at STAL, ticker S-T-A-L, STAR Alliance. This is a one-year, one-day chart. Back in November, we hit our high of 31 cents virtually when she had almost touched that 200-day SMA. And that's as close as she got for the full year. And then on September 8th, she hit a low of 0008. Now, coming down to that six-month, four-hour view, six months ago, we had a high of 5.8 cents, and she's been dribbling downhill all that time to 0008. Now, it was all this volume right here that had me come in because you really can't see any breakout right now. When we looked at it first, it was right here. She had just had this big jump, jumping off of the 20 through the 50 with a very long wick. This is what I call a directional intentional spike. It is showing me the direction she wants to go, her intentions, where she is heading towards. When I see it go up and then back down no lower than where she started and she dropped right there, that tells me I'm going for it as soon as I get an opportunity. So she came back down, hit that 52-week low, went sideways for a few days, and now she's working her way back up. Not a lot of volume to get excited about. It is preliminary setup, but we want to be here early. Now, is she going to make it all the way to that 200? Maybe not on the initial breakout because we're at about 002. Right here is 004. That's 100% gains. That's 006. That's 200. 008, 300. So if we hit the 200, we're going to be seriously in the money. Our oscillators, they are turning right now. You can see they were going down and now they're coming up. We have a recovery about ready to happen. Our MACD, she's already had a crossover three days ago, pushing towards that signal line. And we got lots of green bars accumulating. And our RSI is a bit planted. She's going sideways right now at 52, which is a bit cool. I don't like to see it any lower than 55. Taking a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. Well, that's a serious downtrend on that 200-day SMA. But look, there's our poke jumping off of the 50 all the way to the 200 and through it, hitting a high of 005, coming down no lower than where she started. That tells me I am going to go as soon as I get an opportunity. Now, she did fall down to that 52-week low, skidded sideways for a few days, and now she's worked her way up on top of the 50, and she's bouncing and wrestling up there right now. And this 200 is a heck of a lot closer. That's up there at 0032, which would give us over 50% gains getting to there. These oscillators are a lot stronger. We've got our crossover on our PPO, our percentage price oscillator. We've already crossed the signal line on our MACD, and our RSI is now warmed up to 58. Taking a look at our five day, five minute. So five days ago, our high was 0035, falling down to that triple zero eight. That three day skid on her belly. And then she rode around up on top of the 200 on our five minute chart. Big bar there, right? That shows me her intention. Not a little bar just squeaking up there. I want to get up there. She jumped high, came down and look, didn't even touch. Hasn't touched it until right here. So this tells me she wants to stay up there. She spent a lot of time up there. Now she's going to test it. You've got to expect that to come down and bang on it, even come underneath and bang on it. But right now, we have our 50-day SMA about ready to cross the 200. That's a golden cross. That's a power sign that should give us some strength. And the 200 haul is right behind it. And we've got two green bars bouncing off of it right now. Oscillators say we're in recovery. Look at that. Came down, bounced. Now, it's not a big, strong bounce, but it isn't going down anymore. That's what's most important. We have a recovery going on with our MACD. She definitely went under. She needs to come back up. But you can see our red bars are getting less and less here. And our RSI has dropped again back down to 52. But I like Stahl. She's doing a lot, folks. She's got a lot of different industries she's involved with. She has got money coming in. There's nothing wrong right now. And the chart looks like it's ready for the breakout. We're here early. If you did not put this on your watch list on the 25th, please put it on your watch list now. S-T-A-L. No excuses. Our next top penny stock comes from the major exchange. This is Gritstone Bio, ticker G-R-T-S, Grits. 
Now, she hit a 52-week low about 10 days ago, and she's been bouncing off of that strong and hard, got well over 100% gains, and it's already breaking out. But her technicals are hot. They are still screaming. And why not? A big, big news press came out today. The company is making money, but nowhere near the kind of money they're talking about in this news press. So Grits, it finished today today at $2.45 with over 20% gains. She is on the NASDAQ. That means you're going to be able to trade this for free. You're going to be able to trade it pre-market, after-market. You can't do that with OTC stocks. So what is Gritstone Bio? They're a biotech. And thank God I don't have to go into any deep details. This is hopefully as deep as I need to get. Gritstone Bio is a clinical stage biotechnology company that aims to develop the world's most potent vaccines. We leverage our innovative vectors and payloads to train multiple arms of the immune system to attack critical disease targets. Independently and with our collaborators, we are advancing a portfolio of product candidates to treat and prevent viral diseases and solid tumors in a pursuit of improving patient outcomes and eliminating disease. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Ha! Told you it was big news. Volume jumped from 1.6 million to 12.3 million today. Share structure for grits. Well, they only give us the outstanding share count, which is about 93 million. If that was our float, it's not bad, not the best float, but it's average. But the float could be considerably less. And they tell us the market cap in case you need to know. That is 189 million. Checking a look at the financials for Grits. She's had some ups and downs. 2021, she did $48 million. 2022, she did less than half that, under 20 million. But look here, she is not paying anything for any of that money. Interesting. Looking at her quarterly, that's pretty sad. She has been falling all these quarters, getting lower and lower, starting from 5.4 million going down to under 2 million. Still not paying anything for the money, but they are making less. Thank God for the big news today. Disclosures for the company. We do have one 8K here, and this actually correlates to the news. And this news is the only piece of news that is news. All the other press releases are about their financials. So this came out on the 27th. Gritstone Bio has been awarded a BARDA contract to conduct comparative phase 2B study evaluating next generation vaccine candidate for COVID-19 value at up to $433 million. They tell us here the agreement, which is valued at up to $433 million, was awarded as part of the Project NextGen, an initiative by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. This is the same department that is requesting the DEA to reschedule cannabis. Under the contract, Gritstone Bio will conduct a 10,000 participant randomized phase 2B double blindsided study to compare the efficacy, safety, and immunogenicity of the Gritstone next generation COVID-19 vaccine candidate with an approved COVID-19 vaccine. Preparations for the study are underway and execution of the study will be fully funded by BARDA. Fully funded. Folks, this is what kills most R&D companies. They've got to find money to fund these trials and it can cost you well over a million dollars a month to do that. And BARDA is going to cover it all. Not only does this contract supply all the necessary resources to advance the development but it also signifies the trust and the confidence the U.S. government has placed in our novel vaccine approach. The project has been funded with the federal funds from the Department of the Health and Human Services. Now, I have found a little more information over here in the filing. They tell us here the BARDA contract could result in payments to the company of up to $433 million. The BARDA contract consists of a base period which ends on or before the first quarter of 2024 and a total contract period of four years. Now, the base period for the BARDA contract includes government funding for approximately $10 million to the company for certain milestones being met. 
Following successful completion of the base period, the BARTA contract provides for approximately $423 million of additional funding. So they're going to get $10 million up front. They're going to make money without having to sell anything. And then they're going to get all that money to fund the trials. This is perfect for them, folks. They don't have to ask for any money from us. We don't have to worry about any public offerings. So I would presume this is a big deal. And that is a huge gob of money compared to how much they're making. You can't tell me that's not a hot chart. This is GRIT, sticker GRTS, GRIT Stone Bile. We're looking at a six-month, four-hour view. Six months ago, we had a high of $3.53, and then we had a 52-week low of $1.07 that hit on the 26th of last month. As you can see, she has been in a downtrend all this time, but she has been breaking through this 200 over and over, but it's just way too steep to stay on. She just keeps fumbling and falling over and over till she hit this 52-week low. Look at all the volume. There was zippity doo dah back here, and then it just erupted after that 52-week low bubble. We had our directional intentional spike, right? Right there's your indicator. She went way up through the 200, came back down higher than where she started. Now we should be watching it. Now after that, she can come down lower and roll around as she did. She got up on top of that nine-day SMA, jumped on top of that 200, and she is surging right now. Here comes our 20-day SMA, baby golden cross. Here comes the 50, that'll be a full-blown golden cross. Osculators, you cannot ask for anything better. Every single one of them is going to the moon. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. So we had a downhill trend here to that low bubble, and it is a completely new trend. Look at the excitement here, folks. When she decided to get up on top, she gave us this huge bar, fell back down, bounced on the 50, perfect landing. Once, twice, and she's off and running. Came back down, did not hit the 200, did not hit the 50. She's wrestling with the 20. She's getting lighter like helium. That tells you she wants to climb. If they stay off of the big SMAs and keep moving to the lighter SMAs, you know that price is climbing. We had a high today of $2.52. She fell way back to the nine-day SMA, and then she started pursuing that climb again, and even after market, she is still climbing. And these SMAs look perfect. I'm loving this. Even our 200 is now pushing up. Osculators, all of them are still pushing up. Our RSI is still in the overbought. Clear up at 75 right now. Five-day, five-minute. What a beautiful chart. Low bubble, $1.15, high bubble, $2.52. So just from here to there in the last five days, we've got over 100% gains, folks. A huge rip here, and you can see how she is fully respecting the 200-day SMA. She gets her climb, comes back down to it. Maybe goes under it, but doesn't get far. Another big climb back down to the 200. A little bit under it, but not too much. So this is a pattern you can watch for. Right now, she pulls away, comes back close. So I would expect another jump as she's pulling away, and then she'll come back down to it. There's no guarantee, but you can see what's happening here. Our oscillators are as cool as they've been, but they look pretty good, actually. Look at that bounce right there. She is bouncing off of that pink line, going up. Just like our MACD, it's bouncing up, going up. And our RSI, okay, it's falling. <laughs> Just a wee bit. But folks, it looks good. The news is hot. She was tearing it up today with really strong volume. There's no reason not to put it on your watch list and watch it tomorrow. You could end up with some good bank. Now, here's a company worthy of getting excited about. There's a lot I like about this company. This is Gaucho Group Holdings. Ticker V-I-N-O, Vino. Now her chart is what caught my attention. She was running hard today, over 100% gains, and then she fell back, keeping about 17%. Now that breakout, that was an intentional directional spike. It was the precursor, it's what we're looking for, way down here underneath the 200, through the 200, back down higher than where she started. The volume was incredible today. The float is unbelievable. And Catalyst? Well, yeah, 
they had some news come out today. They sold some property. They got some money. They're paying off some debt. Not really exciting. But in that news press, they said something nobody was expecting, including me. And that's why I'm sharing it with you. And that's why I think she exploded today. So Vino finished today at $2.21 with about 17% gains. And she too is on the NASDAQ. Now this company is working over in Argentina. They're capitalizing over there. They deal with fine wines, luxury real estate, leather goods, fashion goods. They've got a big explanation here. I'm going to give you the smaller version. Not that one, that one. <laughs> About Gaucho Group Holdings. For more than 10 years, Gaucho Group Holdings Inc.'s mission has been to source and develop opportunities in Argentina's undervalued luxury real estate and consumer marketplace. Our company has positioned itself to take advantage of the continued and fast growth of the global e-commerce across multiple market sectors with the goal of becoming a leader in diversified luxury goods and experiences and sought after lifestyle industries and retail landscapes. With a concentration on fine wines, hospitality, and luxury real estate associated with our property, we also have leather goods, ready-to-wear accessories, fashion brands, as well as wines. So they've got a lot of different things they're involved with, but they're all over there in Argentina. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Look at that explosion, folks, from 111,000 to 43.6 million overnight. Share structure for Vino. You're going to love this too. That is not a misprint. The company did a reverse split on the 26th of 1 in 10, and that's what they're left with. Now, the fact of the matter is you cannot have less than a million shares in your float. Well, they got less than a million shares outstanding, and the float can't be higher than the outstanding share count, right? So they've got to fix that problem. They literally could get kicked off of the exchange for not having enough shares. The fix, it's easy. You do a public offering and you put more shares on the market. But that hasn't happened. That's not in the news. That's not what's going on. Not at all. This is what we're going to deal with. Now, I don't know what the float is, but it's under 740,000. It's under three quarter of a million. That is unheard of on the NASDAQ. Taking a look at the financials for Vino. All right, not real impressive here. Up and down all over the place. The end of 2022, they had $1.6 million. They got to keep $167,000. Not real impressed. Quarterly, what's going on here? Well, at least they had a strong quarter. Everything here was about $400,000 roughly. At the end of June this year, they did $710,000. So it was a better quarter but it really isn't worthy of getting excited about. Disclosures for the company. We've got a couple 8Ks here. Let's see what we got. We'll dive into these real quick here. Uh, financial statements. We can bypass that one. This is how quick you do it too. All I'm looking for is this headline right here. That gives me an idea if it's something I think I should be looking at. It's all relevant, but is it relevant right now? Another 8K here, this is on September 29th, material definitive agreement with LVH Holdings, uh, let's see, and Timberline Development to suspend its business operations and terminate development with Timberline. So they do have a couple deals that they've broken. I do remember reading that somewhere else. They've terminated certain deals, but they have been restructuring themselves, which is where the news takes us. So let's jump on into that news. Now, there's only one piece of news. Again, most of this isn't about them, and the ones that are here about them are light. They're about changing management and stuff like that. But this one, this one came out today. Gaucho Group Holdings, Inc. announces new initiatives to increase stockholder value. They tell us up here that Groucho Group Holdings is announcing new initiatives to increase the stockholder value with a sale of non-core assets, enabling the company to sharpen their focus on key business ventures. Now listen carefully, a little of this is boring, but then it just explodes. 
Gaucho Group Holdings, a company that includes a growing collection of e-commerce platforms with a concentration on fine wines, luxury real estate, and leather goods and accessories, unveiled today its intention to list two of its Argentina retail properties situated in San Rafael, Cordoba, for sale at prices of $2 million and 700000 This strategic move is among several initiatives slated for the upcoming months, all designed to amplify stockholder value. These properties constitute a minor segment in the company's asset portfolio. The divestment of these real estate assets will enable the company to concentrate on its primary ventures, notably their wine. The company projects this flagship business to generate revenues approaching $80 million in the forthcoming years. Additionally, if the company manages to sell these non-core properties at their listed price of 2 to $2.4 million, these proceeds would be directed towards reducing debt. Now, this next paragraph caught me and I believe everybody else off guard, probably you too. These efforts form a part of a broader initiative to divest non-core assets. For example, the company owns another property asset, the prospective sale of which could yield between eight to $10 million. These proceeds would be directed towards reducing outstanding debt and possibly issuing dividends to stockholders. Based on the number of shares outstanding, 740,000, come on, this could equate to a dividend of eight to $10 for every share of this stock you own, currently priced at $2.21. Successful execution of these combined efforts could potentially result in cash inflows exceeding 10 to 12 million. Gaucho Holdings has unveiled sales forecasts exceeding $6 million for this year. They've never got that high, right? The company projects that these lots could generate an additional revenue of $80 to $100 million. They've got these other pieces of property that they can sell. 450 lots available for purchase. So they've got a lot of property. And if they don't go changing their outstanding share count by having a public offering and they do want to give a dividend, it would be a big special dividend. And that you would be wanting to take part of. The run on that would just be exciting. People would push this stock to $8 to get an $8 dividend. Well, at least $7.90. All right, let's go take a look at this chart. It's not a great chart, but we're not going to whine about it. This is Vino, ticker V-I-N-O, Gaucho Group Holdings, and we're looking at a one-day, one-year chart. We got a high here of $57.90 on February 2nd. No catalyst that day, but the day before, there were some inside buys. A lot of shares got bought by them. But this was short-lived. She stayed up there jumping from about $10 up to $57.90 and falling back down and then dribbling down all year down to this 52-week low of $1.56 she hit on September 8th. Coming down to that six-month, four-hour view. Still got that same high bubble, still got that same low bubble. And as you can see, she's been underneath the 200 and the 50 all this time. But there has been a lot of punch throughs, lots of them. It's just too steep. There's no way she's going to be able to get up there and stand. So she's not even trying, but she's showing us intention. Now we come all the way down here. We have had no volume at all. Today, we had lots of volume. Exploded from 111,000 to 43 million. And it pushed the price, pushed it from here, the 20 day SMA at two bucks, all the way up to $4. That is a 100% run in a four-hour bar. And she came all the way back down and she tapped the 20. No lower than where she started. This is a perfect signal that says, I am going to run first chance I get. Now, what is the first chance? Could be a catalyst, a piece of news. It could be that this 200 finally gets flat and levels out. As soon as it levels out, you can watch the price just take off through it. Our oscillators, what do we got going here? Our PPO has leveled out and planed out a lot. You can see in the back half of the day, she did come all the way back down. She's sitting on top of that 20 right now. So we're a little bit cool on our oscillators. All of them are showing a bit of depression. 
looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. Well, that's looking better, right? She was under a 50 here, pushing strong, trying to get close to that 200, actually breaking through it a lot. And now look, look at our 200. It is leveled out, right? It has finally gotten flat. Well, right here, she has taken off from $1.89 up to $4, came back down, broke the 200, and she's bouncing off of the 50. That is a good bounce. This is what we expect. She's not going to stay up there in most cases on the first break. That's why I look for the first break. Osculators, well, that was a lot of fall coming from 100% gains all the way back down to 17%. So all of our osculators have turned around and are pushing down hard right now. But don't be worried about that. We're looking for a setup, and that's what we've got, a perfect setup. So for the last five days, she's pretty much been going sideways with dips and rips, right? She came down to a low bubble and came up to a high bubble. She is now underneath her 200, and it looks like she's dipping. I can see that. But I am looking at the setup. We just had our precursor, our intentional directional spike. That's what I look for. Now it's time to put it on my watch list. And then I'm going to watch her come around and come up. And as soon as that volume starts building up, I'm there. Now, I don't know if her volume is going to fall or what. That was a huge huge jump today, but I think it's worthy of putting on your watch list. V-I-N-O. If you get rich, we'll have a drink together and celebrate. And don't forget the real catalyst here, a dividend that could be eight to $10. Greed is going to really motivate these people, folks. So we've got a lot of heat around Vino, but we got a lot of heat around the other stocks too. So please, folks, do some more due diligence. I've given you enough information to show you the potential. I've shown you the charts. You've got to convince yourself they're worthy of investing in. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.